I recently posted this on Twitter and a couple of you asked for a tutorial. Basically, I was inspired by Apple's Liquid Glass, which is a UI element that they recently revealed. It's a UI frame, as I like to call them, that basically bends the light behind it. Doesn't necessarily occlude it, even though sometimes you do have the little blurry aspect. And the goal is to give that beveled, smooth glass effect. So today I'm going to show you the complex method that I use in OBS Studio in order to recreate this or something similar. But then after that, I will show you the easy way of doing it basically with one single filter. All right, so here we are in OBS Studio. I'm going to add my camera just so you can see my beautiful face. Oh, hi, it is I. So the idea here is that I want to use those as UI elements. For example, if I want to have like a goal, I would love to have that little bar show the goal at the bottom. I can have my labels bar, you know, my top cheerer, top tipper up here. I can even have a little frame for the chat. But since those elements are affecting the camera, the camera will definitely always be the background or will be the thing affected. We're going to be using a couple of plugins, so pay attention. First thing I want to do is create a color source to create my main mask. Color source, we'll call it LG mask. Okay, make it whatever size you want. And I'm going to select color and make sure it's white. There we go. I can control D to place it in the middle. And I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to add an advanced mask. That is the advanced mask plugin. How do I find the advanced mask plugin for OBS Studio? You type those exact words into Google. When I add the filter, it's going to give me a rectangle. I'm going to go down and basically uh, shape it up a little bit and give it a corner radius right there. Okay, now I'm going to turn that off and we need to recreate the webcam and use what we just created as a mask. And for that, we're going to use the source clone plugin. And that gives you another source basically right here. Source clone. I'm going to call it LG cam one It's going to ask you which source you want to clone. And that's going to be my camera right there. Boom. You don't see any difference. That's because, well, it's a perfect clone. Now, what we can do is add a filter to that. Click plus. We're going to use the advanced mask filter again. And for mask type, I'm going to go with source because now I can just make my mask follow that LG mask layer that we just created. I just got to find it. It's right there. And as you can see, it takes the shape. Now, why couldn't have I created another mask that just mimics the other one? That's because if I use this as a source, if I go back and modify that mask, then it's going to update, right? So I want one basic thing that I can modify whenever I want. And I want everything to basically clone it. If one day you don't like rounded rectangles anymore, you can just remove it from one layer and then you're good. All right. So now what are we going to use this for? There's a couple of elements to the whole liquid glass thing. And one of them is, you know, the bevel, the, the, the depth. There is a little something that makes it stand out because if it's transparent glass, how are you going to see it? without like distortion. Well, usually you're going to find highlights and shadows and that's what you need to add. I'm going to keep the webcam up just so we can really see the difference. Now there's a couple of plugins. There's a couple of ways of achieving this through filters, but there's a plugin that's called, um, what was it? Stroke glow shadow or something like that. Oh, look at that. It is stroke glow shadow by finite singularity. And those are the effects that you can get. What that plugin does is it gives you three new filters, stroke glow and shadow, but it also gives you sources. So if you want something different, you can also have that happen. So I'm going to go with glow and I'm going to have an inner glow uh, position inner. So inside as if like, it's glowing from the inside, basically. And then play around with the size. Usually you want that to be like that. Uh, intensity, pretty low. It needs to be subtle. It needs to be subtle enough, but it's still visible. I'm not necessarily really trying to copy the, the Apple thing. I need it to, you know, work with live streaming and such. I don't want something that is so subtle that it's not visible on my live stream. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's it for the glow. Let's add a shadow also as a filter. And you can see the shadow, what it looks like and play around with it again. I like to bump up the size to lower the intensity and again, keeping it very, very subtle, something like that. I'm keeping it more exaggerated so you can really see it on screen. Otherwise, like, yeah, <laughs> otherwise it's not going to be visible. Maybe the glow is too much now that it's popping up because of the shadow. Let me lower that. If I lower that all the way down, we still have that stroke. Maybe we want to lower the size. And honestly, like just with the shadow, you see what it looks like, but I think that's decent or so something like that. So if there was no distortion, this is already a pretty decent effect. This is something that you can put information inside and it would still look pretty decent. Okay. I'm actually going to rename this. I'm going to call it emboss. Now we need distortion, but we don't need distortion in the middle. We need distortion all around the edges. And if you watch my videos <laughs> recently, I covered a plugin called shader tastic and that plugin had a filter called displacement map. It basically lets you use a source as a displacement map. So you can put some colors inside that source that tells it how it should deform, which means that we need a shape that goes around, right? Some sort of 
outline or inline, I guess. And then within that shape, we also need colors to vary enough so it knows where to start distorting and then where to blend in. That's actually not that complicated to do. Now, again, we want everything to stem from that LG mask, right? We want everything to come back to that thing because if you want to modify it in the future, you want everything to update with it. So based on that, I'm going to source clone that LG mask. So source clone LG stroke, because that's what it's going to be. The source is going to be LG mask. Okay. Control D to center it. And basically what we need is another advanced mask to create that shape and just subtract it. Right. So we can create a donut. I can go to LG mask, just copy the mask that we created in the first place. Right click, copy, go to LG stroke, right click, paste. Is that simple? You don't see the difference. That's fine. All you have to do is click invert mask. Now it's subtracting. Of course, it's the same size. So we see that little pixelated border. We just need to lower the width. I'm scrolling down on my mouse right now and also the height just like that. And of course, the rounded rectangle is going to be weird. So play around with that too. Mostly lower it until it feels vaguely uniform. Now, the advanced mask has a feature called feathering because we kind of want it to feather a little bit. So we're going to go um, outer for this one because the mask is outer here. <laughs> like it's hard to explain, but trust me, just trust me, right? And we're going to do something like this. It doesn't really, really matter because I think uh, ultimately we're going to blur everything. Hey, congrats. You now know how to create this shape in OBS Studio without any external software. Anyways, now we need to do colors. So I'm going to go to color correction. Now I want to explain the whole displacement map thing based on colors. I showed it in my previous video, but we're going to go through it again. So if I go back to LG Cam Emboss and I add said shader tastic filter and we pick displacement map source under color space it tells you in yuv color space any gray color is a zero displacement color if it's gray it's not gonna move any pixel the unv components define the amount of displacement in a pixel x and y up and down left and right basically one color is gonna move the image in a way and then the other color is going to move the image in another way right transparency here is going to be our gray so let's go back to stroke color correction and i want my main color to be a purple okay cool now here comes the shader filter plugin all right, shader filter plugin. That's a new one. And I basically need something that will pull some colors inside. And in this case, I'm going to use RGB split because it gives me a lot of control. So RGB split, nice. And as you can see, I'm already getting different colors. Now, honestly, at this point, if you want to know how it displaces, well, the whole thing, what you can do is go to your emboss here. I added it, shader tastic filter, um, and then basically select it as a source. So displacement map should be LG stroke. If I can find it, there it is. And you can already see the result, right? So based on that, even if you don't know exactly what color does what, you should be able to play around with it enough in order to kind of recreate that sort of glass distortion or glass displacement really, or refraction really. <laughs> but as you can see, it's extra sharp and we're gonna blur it. Don't worry about that part, okay? So if I go back to my LG stroke, just playing around with the um, RGB split, I'll be able to pull in certain colors and all that stuff, and you can see just how much it is. Keep in mind that you can lower the intensity, which is what we're, we should do actually. Put it at point one and again go back to lg stroke and just play around with uh with your rgb split yeah you see right there when i move my blue x this is the color blue this is what it does and something like that is kind of what i want i want two colors i want one color that starts one color in the middle and then one color to basically fade it out all right so that type of color scheme is what i'm aiming for really right now this is so trippy man <laughs> and then of course we're gonna blur it so that it blends together in general <laughs> just blends together so i have to go to my lg stroke for that go and then add a blur i am gonna be using the composite blur plugin and it's just a blur boom and it's a blur that doesn't necessarily mess up with your uh with your cpu too much don't worry you're seeing the you're seeing the highlights and shadows being mixed up in there and uh don't worry about that too much and you can see how it you know it distorts it starts distorting one way goes left and then goes back in to be normal that's what we want and of course on the side we're gonna see that refraction that they show in the apple thing i really love that <laughs> so basically if blur is zero it's super sharp and then the more you blur it the softer that glass bevel is. So definitely play around with it. 
to your liking. God, I love this thing. And right now you can see that our bevel or shadow and highlight is also being affected. Top left here, you can see it's distorted. We don't want that. What we can do to remedy this is as simple as grabbing the shader tastic filter, so the displacement, and then bringing it up all the way up. There we go. There we have it. Now, this is actually different than what I showed on Twitter. This is better technically. Now, for example, you don't like the intensity or maybe you don't like that it's distorting on the X axis at all, because if it's on your camera, then it gives me that effect. Uh, we can just lower it, just lower. Boom. There you go. It doesn't distort. But if I do this, you can still see the wobble a little bit. I just I'm going to strengthen this. <laughs> nice. So it's really up to you to play around with it until it looks like something you like. I personally love the intensity of it when it's like that. I think that's pretty cool. Again, you don't like the glow, you can remove it. You don't like the shadow either. Well, well, you should keep a little bit of shadow, but hey, it's still active. If you want it to be slightly blurry or more visible, you just need to add some effects before the, before the mask or before the displacement. Let's add a blur, for example. Let's go with composite blur. And of course, we need it to be up top. So we're going to bring it up, up, up. Already not bad. What happens on top? Yeah, that works. Of course, this is too much blur. You can blur it just a little bit. And yeah, and you still get that effect. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> it's a weird effect and it takes a lot of steps. If you want to add multiple of them and you don't want to redo all of this, basically group them up. All right. Have a group for all the masks. OK, your LG mask basically have a group with all of them. So you're going to have the, your chat here, your labels bar here, your goals here. And then use the stroke source that comes with the stroke glow shadow to create that RGB split stroke and then use one single clone source as we did to add those effects. There's one effect that I really liked and it's in the shader filter plugin emboss color, I think. Yeah, it's that weird effect. Let's bring it all the way up before the blur. Let's turn off the blur. And basically, this is what the effect is. Play around with the intensity, make it real intense, but then you blur it. So it gives you this extra effect within that bubble. That's not necessary. But since it's the shader filter plugin, then you can just add whatever you want. Whoa, if I remove the chroma here, now you have actual liquid glass because it's because <laughs> it's constantly moving. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh, talking about liquid uh, shader filter plugin also has a frosted glass effect. Or is it? Ooh. so if you want actual frosted. Oh, my. Yeah, if you want actual frosted glass, you can use this effect. What the hell? You can even animate it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah, and if you want it to be kind of a magnifying glass, you can do a uh, fisheye or the opposite, like a lens. You can also do that. <laughs> this is wild though. Oh yeah, so to prove you the advantage of using one single mask for all that, um, well to prove, to show you, is if I go to LG mask and I modify this in any way, hopefully it works if I did everything right. Uh, let's say you don't like uh, corner radius anymore. Look at that. So if you want to animate it using the move plugin, for example, you're all set, like you're ready. Anyway, now let's talk about the easy method. <laughs> and the easy method is by going to ndlp.co.uk and downloading the shader. So you'll just set it up with the shader filter plugin and it will give you access to all of those features. I think they're listed right here and look at all the things you can modify. And that way you don't need to do all of the stuff that I just showed you because it's all in one single shader. Now, it's a product that is only for members. So you need to subscribe to the website for at least five euros a month. But the good news is that every product that he releases will also be available for you to download. Right now he has the perfect square sole, <laughs> which is um, the actual Apple technique to make rounded rectangles. He also has a Apple notification type of alert that you can have on stream. So combining all of those, you can really, really have the perfect actually looking like Apple's liquid glass. I know he has a YouTube video where he shows it. Andy, I need you to add the YouTube video somewhere here. There it is. And there it is. I'm not going to spoil it. Go watch it. I'm going to link it in the description. And if you want to support someone who's creating cool stuff for OBS and all that, then uh, do it, honestly. And that's it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with your streamer friends, and I'll see you next time.